when you got there, because you did come in, I forgot later, we talked about your teaching. All right. Yeah. Oh, shit. Get this. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, let's talk after we read. Because I've already started recording. I don't want to cut it all out later. <laughs> are, you, are you recording? Stop recording. <laughs> I'll cut it out. I just. Stop recording. Whoa. It is his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I demand to stop recording. What? What do you? My mean? birthday. No, just because I need like two minutes to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. I'll be right back. Y'all get started. Okay. After are we on? We are on. Let me see. We just did. We're on chapter book. We're on book seventeen. It's called Menelaus's Finest Hour. Oh, uh, yes. When I opened my PDF, I thought it said Menelaus' final hour, and I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> that would be some spice that would have been Not a ton happens in 17, but it is a book <laughs> in this book. <sighs> um, do either of you, I know it was so long ago, want to recap 15 and or 16? More importantly, 16 Patroclus fights and dies. Uh, uh, doesn't Patroclus fight and die? Yeah. Okay, well, okay, so I, I can do better than Colin. <laughs> <laughs> How? <laughs> okay, so I remember Patroclus was talking to Achilles, and they came up with this whole plan that Patroclus was going to go and try to fight <laughs> and try to not die. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and Achilles was like, just like, get in, get out, don't fuck around, you're not the hero here, <laughs> come back to me, and um, then he started fighting, and people were like, oh, that's Achilles, because he was all dressed up in Achilles stuff, and that was the whole thing, um, and then uh, he does fight a lot, and then uh, he kills Hector. Not yet. He kills someone. Hector's still alive. Patroclus kills Sarpedon. Okay. Yeah. yeah he's the head of the Lycenes. Yeah. Important guy. It's uh-huh. kind of like uh, if someone were to kill Odysseus. It's like a pretty big deal. Yeah. So Hector, Patroclus <laughs> is killing some people and he starts getting it like real egotistical about it. And he's like, I can win the war. And so he starts just up everybody and they're like wait wait a second that's not achilles though (laughs) Um, and um then he kills hector (laughs) no is that in this chapter hector doesn't die he hasn't died yet okay never mind no one kills hector um (laughs) patroclus is like people up and then um uh then he gets killed and then achilles is like my love, I told you not to try to be the hero here. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then you oh, did. No. You did and you died. <laughs> and I'm sad. <laughs> you did and you died. <laughs> Good job. Two um, things. Hector yeah. is the one who kills Patroclus, which is important. I think that's uh, yeah. Ross on that one. But yeah, Hector killed Patroclus and yeah, bro. Achilles. You should watch the movie. <laughs> you should watch the movie. And um, <laughs> Achilles doesn't know yet, so... Oh, no. You don't know. Oh, no. Wait, we're on 18, right? We are uh, on 17. Oh, my bad. Melee's finest hour, not final. (laughs) Helen's finest hour? Menelaus. Menelaus. Menelaus is fine, dude. (laughs) He's fine. Crush of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie, it's official crush of the podcast. Ooh. Ooh. Looking mighty fine this hour. We did decide in one episode that he was like one of the best people, like more oh, morality. He's a hunk. Yeah, bro. Well, he's, he's a moral round. hunk. And hunk. He's a moral hunk. <laughs> <laughs> I request mentally as fanfic. Okay. So we're let's let's get going. Menelaus' finest hour. Marat, since it's your birthday, you, you, can, you can be whoever you want to be. You get to pick. Oh, 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 oh. All right. Um, 
We don't. Yeah, I was like, to be sure, like, can I be the narrator? But then I decided, nope, that's not a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> you could. <laughs> I, feel like you, I feel like you gotta be Menelaus, right? Because it's his finest oh, form. You have to like, yeah, bro. be yeah. glorious, dude. There you go. Glorious. I'm fine like Menelaus. Marat's finest hour. Replace <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> every Menelaus of mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. But Atreus' son, the fight of Menelaus, <laughs> marked it all. The Trojans killing Patroclus there in the brutal carnage. Encrusted now in his gleaming bronze gear, Atreides plowed through the front to stand astride the body, braced like a mother cow lowing over a calf, her firstborn, first labor pain she felt. So the red-haired captain bestrode Patroclus now, shielding his corpse with a spear and round buckler, burning to kill off any man who met him face to face. But Euphorbus, who hurled the le lethal ashen spear, would not neglect his kill. Patroclus's handsome body. Halting close beside it, he taunted the fighting Menelaus. Back. <laughs> Hi, and the mighty... Oh, shit. I want to start over. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, very solid start to that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back. <laughs> Hi, and the mighty Atreides, captain of armies, back from the corpse and leave the bloody gear. I was the first Trojan, first of the famous allies, to spear Patroclus down in the last rough charge. So let me seize my glory among the Trojans now, or I'll spear you too. I'll rip your own sweet life away. Ooh. The red-haired captain flared back in anger. That's my life. Am I, am no. I <laughs> red-haired? Oh, he's red-haired. Yeah. Oh, Father Zeus, listen to this indecent, reckless bluster. Not even Leopard's Fury makes the beast so proud. Not even the lions, not the murderous wild boars, the greatest pride of all, bursting the boar's chest. They're nothing next to the pride of Panthus' sons with their strong ashen spears. But no, no joy did even powerful Hypernar Breaker of horses, <laughs> get from his his young strength when he scorned me, stood up to me, reviling, reviling, reviling me as the weakest fighter in all Achaea's armies. Home he went, I'd say, but not on his own two feet, and brought no cheer to his loyal, loving wife and devoted parents. And you, I'll break your courage for you for. I'll break your courage for you, too, if you try to take me on. Go back to your own rank and file, I tell you. Don't stand up against me, or you will meet your death. Even a fool learns something once it, is, it hits him. So he warned, <laughs> but failed to shake Euphorbus. I'm going to have to listen to him again. Uh, they start fighting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll break you. Oh, I'll hurt you. Yeah, it's, it's fine. You're going down. <laughs> you're going down. No, you're going down. No, leave the armor to me. <laughs> oh my. Crowds Menelaus is round shield, full center, not battering through. The brazen point bent back in the tough armor. Menelaus rose with a bronze lance in a prayer to Father Zeus and lunging out at Euphorbus's just dropping back pierced the pit of his throat, leaning into it hard, his whole arm's oh. weight in the stroke to drive it home. And the point went slicing through the tender neck. He fell with a crash, armor ringing against his ribs. His locks, like the grace's locks, splashed with blood. His braid, oh, still braided tight with gold and silver clips, pinched in like a wasp's waist. There he lay like an olive, slip a farmer rears to strain on a lonely hilltop, drenching it down with water, a fine young stripling tree. And the wind stir it softly, rustling from every side, and it bursts with silver shoots. Then suddenly out of nowhere a gale and wind force a wind and gale force comes storming, rips it out of the trench, stretches it out on the earth. So Panthus's stripling son lay sprawled in death. Euphorbus who hurled down the strong ashen spear, Menelaus cut him down, was stripping off his armor. Euphorbus was the one who initially stabbed Patroclus fatally before oh. Victor came in for like the fatal wound. Oh, so Euphorbus is like the real, what is the word? 
Achilles' boyfriend killer. One of a couple, yeah. <laughs> One of a couple. <laughs> Full of homebreakers in true. It was kind of like Euphorbus, Apollo, and Hector worked together. Um, oh, did they tag team them? Yeah. So, rest in peace. Yeah. So now Menelaus is guarding Patroclus' body. We've talked about this a bunch of times before. I've tried to make it very important because it is. Um, you know, if Patroclus doesn't get buried correctly, his soul is damned. So they need to get his body back to the camp so that they can bury him correctly. Mm. Um, so good. the good thing is Menelaus guarding his body, not a single Trojan fighter had the spine to go and face Atreides, tensing in all his strength. Then and there, Menelaus might have stripped Euphorbus and swept the Trojans' glittering armor off with ease if Apollo had not grudged him in all that glory, rousing Hector against him, swift as Ares. Taking a man's shape, Siconius' captain Mentes, Apollo spurred him on with winged orders. Hector, you're chasing the wild wind, fiery Achilles' team. They're hard for mortal men to curb and drive, but all but Achilles. His mother is immortal. Uh, but all the while, <laughs> Menelaus, Atreus' fighting son besides Patroclus, he's killed the Trojans' best. Pantheus' son, Euphorbus, stopped his fury cold. So Hector hears that, and he is swept with grief. Um, very sad, and so on. Mm. He releases a savage cry, and he flares on like the god of fire, the blaze that never dies. And the cry pierced Menelaus, deeply torn now, as he probed his own grieving great heart. What can I do? If I leave this splendid gear and desert Patroclus, who fell, who, am I Menelius? Yeah. Wait, is this Menelius? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing the right thing. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All to redeem my honor. Won't any comrade curse me, seeing me break away? But if I should take on Hector and Hector's Trojans alone, in single combat, trying to save my pride, won't they encircle me, one against so many? This flashing Hector has all Troy at his back. But why debate, my friend? Why thrash things out? When you fight a man against the will of the gods, a man they have sworn to honor, then look out. A heavy way of ruins about to overwhelm you. Surely no Achaean will curse me, seeing me now, giving ground to Hector. Since fighting Hector's flanked by God Almighty. And if only I knew where Ajax could be found, that man with his ringing war cry. We two together would go back to the melee, calling up our fury. Even fight in the teeth of every god on high and haul the body back to Achilles, somehow. Things are bad, but that would be the best. Working it out, his heart racing on as they came, waves of Trojan soldiers, and Hector led them in. And Atreides gave ground. He left the corpse, but kept on turning round to face an attack. Like a great bearded lion, the dogs and field hands drive back from the folds with spears and sharp cries, and the brave battling heart in his chest freezes tight, and the big cat, all reluctance, pulls back from the sheds. So the red-haired captain backed away from Patroclus's corpse, but wheeled at bay when he reached his waiting allies, glancing round and round for Ajax's massive hulk. All at once on the left flank, he marked him, spurring companions, urging them to fight. For Phoebus had filled each man with quaking fear. So Apollo not only spurred Hector on, but he also caused all of the Argives to feel fear. Mm. Atreides went on the run and reached him, shouting. That's also Menelaus. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Ajax, Ajax, hurry, my friend, this way. Fight for dead Patroclus. At least we could bring his body back to Achilles, stripped as Patroclus is, but not Achilles' armor. Hector with that flashing helmet has seized it all. Oh, what a sh... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. Cold, bro. So he roused the fury and battling Ajax's heart, and down the front he stalked with the red-haired king. Hector tearing the famous armor off Patroclus tugged hard at the corpse, 
mad to hack the head from the neck with the bronze and drag the trunk away to glut the dogs of Troy. Yeah. But in charged Ajax, shields like a tower before him, and Hector, falling back on a crowd like co crowd of comrades, leapt to his chariot, flinging the burnished gear to his raiding troops to haul away to Troy, trophies to be his own enormous glory. But Ajax, shielding Patroclus round with his broad buckler, stood fast now like a lion cornered round his young, when the hunters cross him, leading his cubs through woods. He ramps in all the pride of his power, bristling strength, the heavy folds of his forehead frowning down his eyes. So Ajax stood his ground over brave Patroclus now, the fighting Atreides right beside him, standing fast, his grief mounting every waiting moment. But Glaucus, <laughs> Hippolochus' son and lord of Lycia's forces now, scowled at Hector, lashing out at him. So there's a few important details, even though Glaucus is, like, not that important in this big, long model. Glaucus. Glaucus. So, we'll need a quick Glaucus. Hector! Hector. <laughs> <laughs> there's an echo in here. <laughs> yes. I'll give you this one. You can be Glauco. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll do it. Glauco. <laughs> Hector, <laughs> our prince of beauty, in battle all a sham, that empty glory of yours, a runner's glory, a scurrying girl's at that, excuse you. Damn. Now, you'd better, plan <laughs> to, you'd better plan how to save your city, you alone, and your native troopers born in Troy. Now, not a single Lycian goes to fight the Argives, not to save your Troy. What lasting thanks for us, for warring with your enemies, and on and on to no end. What hope has the common soldier in your ranks to be saved by you, Hector, you heart of iron? If you could quit Sarpedon, your guest and friend in arms, abandoned there, as carrion fit for the Argive maws, think what a staunch support Sarpedon was to you, and to all Troy while the man was still alive. Now you lack the daring to save him from the dogs. So now, if any Lycian troops will obey my orders, home we go, and headlong death can come and topple Troy. If the Trojans had that courage, unswerving courage that fires men who fight for their own country, beating their enemies down in war and struggle, then we could drag Patroclus back to Troy at once. If we could haul him from battle, dead as he is, and lodge him behind King Priam's looming walls, our enemies would release Sarpedon's, Sarpedon's gear at once, and then, then we could bring his body back to Troy. For the man we cut down here was the loyal friend of Prince Achilles, far the greatest among the Argive ships, and at his command go rugged fighters hand to hand. But you, with enemy war cries ringing in your ears, you lacked the nerve to go up against great Ajax, that fierce heart, to look him straight in the eye and fight the man head on. He's a better man than you. So there's a few important points. The first one is that the Lycians are mad because they abandoned Sarpedon, the leader of the, the Lycians, when Patroclus killed him. A little note here is that Zeus actually took Sarpedon's body away back to Sarpedon's home. So the archives are getting a little bit um, more credit than they deserve, but mm. they are right in the fact that the archives have Sarpedon's armor, I believe. Mm. Uh, so they're saying if we could get Patroclus, we can then later trade for Sarpedon. Um, oh. So do that. And Hector, <laughs> Hector's mad at him. That's fair. <laughs> That's really fair. With a dark glance from under his flashing helmet, Hector lashed back. Hector. Glaucus! Such brazen insolence from a decent man like you. But why? Ah, too bad. And I always thought you excelled the rest in sense. All who hail from Lycia's fertile soil. But now, you fill me with contempt. What are you saying? You tell me that I can't stand up to monstrous Ajax? 
I tell you, I never cringe at war and thundering horses. But the will of Zeus will always overpower the will of men. Zeus who strikes fear in even the bravest man of war and tears away his triumph, all in a lightning flash. And at other times, he will spur a man to battle. Come on, my friend. Stand by me. Watch me work. See if I prove a coward dawn to dusk, your claim. Or I stop some Argive, blazing, on, all, blazing in all this power, from fighting on to shield Patroclus' corpse. With that, he loosed a shrill cry to his Trojans. Trojans, Lycians, <laughs> Dar Darden, Darden fighters, hand to hand. Now be men, my friends. Call up your battle fury. I'll strap on the brave Achilles' armor, burnished armor. I strip from strong Patroclus when I kill them. So, That's just disrespectful. Yes, absolutely. That's mean. Hector is putting on Achilles' armor. That's not cool, bro. Mm -mm. Well, wait, wait. So, does that mean Hector is giving up his new nice shiny, shiny helmet? For a shinier helmet. <laughs> For a shinier helmet. <laughs> Achilles is meant a mohawk. I mean, no. it wasn't hair, like. <laughs> that would be lit if I was just like his hair popping out of the helmet. Like hair sprayed off. Huh? I'm pretty sure the, the Mohawk tribe of Native America. <laughs> Mohawk tribe. <laughs> yes, this is where they came from. No, I'm telling the truth. Like, yeah, I think that's true, yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what? it may not be true, but there's a tribe called the Mohawks, and I'm pretty sure that that's where the... Really? Yeah. Wow. That's pretty cool, actually. Not okay. just learning classic literature here. No. <laughs> Yo, classic, I like that. Classic hairstyles. Um. <laughs> classic hairstyle, that's the next one. Great spinoff, great spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> Is okay. that like the anyway. Native American Homer? <laughs> um, Hector... Exchanges the armor, he he puts on Achilles' armor. Mm -hmm. And Zeus, like, does not really approve of that. That's fair. Zeus, who arrays the clouds, saw Hector from afar, strapping on the gear of Peleus' godlike son. He shook his head and addressed his own deep heart. Poor soldier. Never a thought of death weighs you down your spirit weighs down your spirit now. Yet death is right beside you. You donned the deathless arms of a great fighter, and all other fighters tremble before him. True. But you? You killed his comrade. Gentle, strong, and against all rights, you ripped the immortal armor off his head and shoulders. So great power for the moment I will grant you to compensate for all that is to come. Never again will you return from battle, Hector. Nor will Andromache take that famous armor, Achilles' deathless armor, from your hands. Zeus has said it, and so it is true. This is mm. Hector's last day, oh, more or less. He is never going to return home to Troy, never going to mm. see his wife again. And because Zeus feels a little sad about that, he's basically superpowering Hector for the time being. So he goes out in a blaze of glory. Oh, that's <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Okay. He's like, here's your punishment and a uh, reward. <laughs> yeah, there we go. You have fun for like three minutes. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> yeah. I like that. This works in weird <laughs> yeah. It's just like, damn, bro. So he puts on um, illustrious armor, and he is now flashing before them all in the gleaming battle gear of great-hearted Achilles. Not just his helmet anymore. Now it's his whole body, baby. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. Mary Allen. He, he is just flashing right now. <laughs> we are skipping a little bit. Um, Menelaus has a good line. He says, no. Forward each on his own, you'll die of shame if the dogs of Ilium make Patroclus ripping sport. Oof. Um, Oof. This, this fine hour of Menelaus is basically defending Patroclus' body. He does all right at it. Um, <laughs> he does fine at it. <laughs> he is fine. This ends kind of in a circle. Um, Zeus, the thing is, uh, um, 451, Zeus admits that he's never, he never hated Menoetius' son, Patroclus, in the past, 
Well, he was alive and still Achilles' aid. And now the father loathed to see him pray to Troy's marauders, the ravening dogs of Troy. So he drove his comrades on to shield his corpse. So everyone's shielding Patroclus. The Trojans then grab Patroclus' foot and start dragging him. But the Argives grab the rest of his body and are dragging him this way. So all day long for the men of war, the fighting raged. Grim and grueling, relentless, drenching labor, nonstop, and the knees, shins, and feet that upheld each fighter. Their hands, their eyes, ran with the sweat of struggle over the great runner Achilles' steadfast aid in arms, an enormous tug of war. And when the master tanner gives his crews the hide of a huge bull for stretching, the beast's skin soaked in grease and the men grab hold, bracing round in a broad circle, tugging, stretching hard, till the skin's oils go dripping out as the grease sinks in. So many workers stretch the whole hide, tough and taut. So back and forth, in a cramped space they tugged, both sides dragging the corpse and hopes rising. I can't. This analogy, this analogy did not. Yeah. <laughs> It's a lot, and it's, I don't know if you've seen, like, photos of old tanning methods, but basically what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why every morning I wake up like, oh, what time <laughs> this is the tan <laughs> They've got Patroclus up like he's crowd surfing, and everyone has an, a limb or his head, and they're all pulling in different directions. It's that literally, sounds so uncomfortable. Yeah, it's a tug of war with his dead body. Um, so <laughs> And he's almost naked because they've taken everything off of him. Oh um, my gosh. He's just like lolling around and they're like, <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, not great. Wait, why? <laughs> yeah, why couldn't just like one guy be like, yeah, I got him, don't worry. <laughs> 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 well, Hector and the Trojans want him to trade for Sarpedon. Okay, yeah, yeah. Him. It's just they're fighting over the body. It's not like they're doing something to the body right now. That. It's yeah. a normal thing, okay. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, you know, I like the skin better. You can keep the rest. <laughs> uh, you keep the skin's oil, we get the skin. <laughs> no, it's just a big no. Um The Trojans want him as a bartering chip. Uh, mm. The archives want him to bring him back to Achilles so that we can right. marry him and, and so on. Mm. Uh, so they're, they're fighting for Patroclus. But... Dramatic irony. Great Achilles knew nothing yet of Patroclus's death. They were fighting far afield of the deep sea ships beneath the Trojan wall, so Achilles never feared his friend was dead. He must still be alive, pressing oh. to the very That's... gate. But he'd come back. Very sad. <laughs> Achilles, Achilles. Achilles never dreamed Patroclus would storm all Troy without him. Not even with him. Yeah. What? No, time and again, his mother Thetis told him that this was not to be. She told him alone, in secret, always bringing word of mighty Zeus's plans, but not this time. One thing she had never told him, his own mother, what terrible thing had taken place. His dearest friend in arms on earth lay dead. And over his corpse, there was no let up. The fighters kept on thrusting wedded spears, locked in endless struggle, cutting each other down. And an Argive, and they're shouting, <laughs> unimportant. <laughs> Take the body. Standing clear of the fray, Achilles' horses wept. From the time they first had sensed their driver's death, brought down in the dust by man killing Hector. Darius's rugged son, Automedon, did his best, lashing them over and over with stinging whip, coaxing them gently now, now shouting oath on oath, but both balked at returning now to the ships, moored at the hell spot far reaching shore, or galloping back to fight against the fight beside the Argives. <laughs> Staunch as a pillar planted tall above a barrow, standing sentry over some lord or lady's grave site. So they stood holding the blazoned Chariot stock still, their heads trailing along the ground, warm tears flowing down from their eyes to wet the earth. The horses mourned, longing now for their driver, their luxurious manes soiled, streaming down from the yoke pads, down along the yoke. And Zeus pitied the art. It's, it's horse time. Um, it's horse time. <laughs> oh, gosh. Wait, elaborate. <laughs> so 
the horses are crying. They're so sad to see Patroclus die. And Zeus says, you know what? I feel so bad for these horses. I don't want Hector to take these horses. So he sends the horses home to the ships. That's it. We're going to skip that. <laughs> Zeus is so weird. Yeah, Zeus is yeah. Like, I feel bad about the horses, though, <laughs> even though I'm, like, brutally killing everybody. And, right. like, this whole war is sort of you know, him just, like, having fun. Just, kind of him. <laughs> just a little bit. He's, like, little help, like, little powerful help on this side, yeah. little powerful help over here. Right. You're going to die, but you can have some super speed or whatever. Horse <laughs> That's what happens. All right, let me see this. Oh, I went too far. I fixed this horses one. Horses can have whatever they want. <laughs> the horses, yeah. Horses are the real heroes. <laughs> um, also, like, oh, didn't like Zeus, like, sorry, like, half orchestrate everything that's going on? Like, why does anything shock him? <laughs> yeah. He's just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Automadon can see that Hector and Aeneas are about to start fighting in, and they and so he runs down to Menelaus and Ajax and tells him to leave Patroclus now to the best men you can find. You need to help us. Aeneas and Hector are coming. Uh, so they fight against Hector and Aeneas. None of the plot-armored main characters die. Um, mm. uh, there's a moment when a spear hits the ground and it starts, like, whiffling back and forth like this. You know, and then Ares, Ares snuffs its fur, its fury out, and then it stops and is dead still. <laughs> and I don't know why that gets like four lines. But it does. That's so sick. <laughs> so the fight goes on and on and on. Athena comes down and helps a little bit. Um, eventually, Menelaus does seem to pull him over, and that's going well for a little bit. Zeus lets down some lightning because he's just mad. Classic. They send an aide back to tell Achilles what's going on. Oh. Finally. <laughs> <laughs> For real. Yeah, well, I just chill. They do just, like, remember him for a minute. You know, it's like, we have to fight for Patroclus. He's so nice and kind and gentle. If only he was still alive, blah. If only he was still alive. <laughs> We need him stripped as he is. Hector with the flashing helmet has his armor, but we have to bring him back to Achilles. I, I, I sent Antilochus. Okay. He's off to the fast ships to tell Swift Achilles, but I've little hope he'll come at all for all his rage at Hector. How can he fight the Trojans without armor? <laughs> so come, alone as we are, find the best way out. How do we pull the body clear and save ourselves from the Trojan uproar, flee our death, our fate? And the great Telamonian Ajax answered firmly, All true. Straight to the point, Lord Menelaus. Quickly, you and Mirionis? Mirionis. <laughs> Shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Shoulder up the body. <laughs> Carry it off the lines. We're right behind you, fighting the Trojans, fighting this Prince Hector. The two... Uh, Aeantes. 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 Aeantes bearing the same fury, the same name, and no stranger, no strangers at standing up to slashing Ares, each defending the other side by side. So he urged and up from the earth they caught Patroclus's body in their arms, hoisting it high above their heads with a great heave. <laughs> Again, he's just like crowd surfing his body. He's crowd surfing his body. Yeah. Oh. Everyone's looking at Strathus' dead butt. <laughs> and there's a line on 466 that says, the two Aeantes kept on beating the Trojans off. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Important points in the story. 